catch a ghost tonight. Uh, yeah, God willing. We're essentially inside a beast right now. 465 people saw a shadow figure. They saw a shadow baby. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Anyone in this house? Squish me. Squish the boy. <laughs> Hi, my name's Fred Cashman. I'm Karen Cashman. We have a great piece of evidence from the famous haunted Hinsdale house. I suddenly felt like somebody was watching me. Boom across like my the back. I was standing up on my haunt. A stick figure show up on the Somebody pulling camera. on my pant leg. I'm like to find this unexplained shape. Can you guys investigate? Welcome to Ghost Files, where we take your evidence and our tools into the field to expose the supernatural. My partner, a skeptic. Myself, a believer. Both of us, truth seekers. This week, our team travels to the countryside of New York State to investigate the haunted Hinsdale House. Well, this is absolutely haunting. Uh, hauntingly beautiful. Seems like a nice place to die. Cool, let's go home. No, 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 let's go home. Let's go to home. Well, we're actually starting outside. There's a bunch of weird stuff that goes on out in these woods. So we're going to the woods. Into the woods we do go. That'll be fun. Fun to go into the woods with your, your pal. Yeah. While some believe that paranormal activity has plagued the land since before the Hinsdale House's construction in the 1870s, the public became aware of the land's oppressive phenomena, the Dandy family, consisting of parents Clara and Phil, son Mike, and daughters Beth, Laura, and Mary, moved into the home on July 18th. 1970. Over the years, the family encountered disembodied voices, multiple apparitions, possible possessions, and much, much more, forcing them out of the house a mere four years later. Clara went on to publish a book about their time in the home. In it, she wrote, there was nothing in its appearance to warn anyone. How could we have known it formed a door to another world, which enmeshed our family in its frightening coils? It was dramatic. That's Shakespearean right there. I'm gonna yeah, say that verbatim those. in every room in the house. I'm now enmeshed in your frightening coil. It sounds pretty nice. You're sounds free. like a nice little hug from a squid or something. It fell into disrepair until it was bought by Daniel Class, who opened the house up to investigations in hopes of finding an answer to what haunts this home. And if anybody can find those answers, it's us. The world's undisputed greatest ghost hunters ever in all of history. According yeah, to baby. Some, according to some. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the middle of nowhere, the entire home is packed into 1,100 square feet, each of which bristles with activity. We'll begin our investigation outside by the woods, which are said to be home to tortured spirits. Then we'll move into the first floor of the home, containing the son's bedroom, kitchen, and the living room. Heading upstairs, we find the parents' and daughters' rooms, where they reportedly spent countless nights tormented by ghosts that refused to give them rest. Afterwards, we'll descend into the root cellar, which is rumored to be the site of a horrific crime. We've placed cameras and audio recorders in two of the most active rooms in the house in hopes that we capture evidence throughout the night. First, in Mary's room, reportedly the epicenter of activity where objects have been seen moving on their own. The other location will be the living room, which is said to be the most active room in the house, despite attempts to cleanse it of spirits. To end the investigation, Shane and I will each be forced to explore the entire building one at a time because the power of Christ compels us to do incredibly dangerous and dumb shit. Are you excited to see a demon? Oh, you know me, I love a demon. I want to believe. I really want to believe. You look know? like you're about to beat the shit out of a demon. You got two Sure, I'll fists. do that too. You always kiss your hands before you punch someone? It feels like- I kiss like... my hands a lot. It, more than, uh, you know, when I'm doing dishes, sort of a Yeah. <laughs> We're starting our investigation outside in the woods, where a whole smorgasbord of unexplained spooks are said to reside. From reports of phantom drummings, disembodied Gregorian chants, inexplicable lights, disembodied eyeballs, and even gnome-like cryptids. This place has it all. It sounds like a Zed concert. Yeah. <laughs> 
You got drums, you got chanting. Yeah. And then just those eyeballs are like rolling. Dr Light show going off, lasers, yeah. fog. You do that like fucking. The tracers. Meanwhile, the gnomes are like. Yeah, I forgot about the little gnomes. Daughter Mary, along with a friend, saw a lady in white dancing by the pond. Mary said, quote, her eyes were bugging out of her head. <laughs> it is a Zed concert. Gnomes in the back like, yeah, Mary, yeah. Her eyes were bugging out of her head, end quote, and that the woman had probably hanged herself. God damn, bro. I mean, or she's just feeling herself, you know? I've seen crazy people dancing like that. Not crazy, just people having too good of a time. Rumors still persist to this day of a hanging tree on the property named the Tree of Despair. Despite that terrifying name, the home seems to be surrounded by some playful poltergeists that are ready to party as shown in the multiple pieces of evidence taken from outside the home. Well, on that note, let's take a look at this evidence, huh? Oh, what do we got? Okay, so this photo, originally taken by Jeff Fent, was sent to us by Billy Lindemuth. Yep. Clearly a face. Looks almost alien-like, almost kind of like it's Hopper from alien. Bugs Life. I was gonna say, it looks like a big grasshopper. That just... sounds like the scariest cryptid of all time. A big grasshopper? A giant grasshopper? Well, giant grasshoppers aside, you would say that what is a person? Maybe we're looking at some sort of hell portal here at this house. This next piece of evidence comes from Daniel Class, who we've talked to you guys about before, owns the house now. What's going on with this photo? What's all the shit? Why are all these photos so bad? It's pretty I, hard I to not see it. I assume there's a shadow man of some kind. Yeah, well, I mean, we're... that's what the giant arrow with the question mark yeah, would suggest. Yeah, we got a shadow man and a bunch of white hairs? We don't have to dwell on that. Let's go to the next piece of evidence from Daniel. Now, that appears to be Oogie Boogie. It sort of does. <laughs> right Look, I'll give you this one. This, this could, this this could be kind of blobby, Yeah, it's maybe. a bit smudgy. We got a smudge. So we got a lot going on already. We're not even in the house. That's in the woods. Well, it sounds like there's a real ghoul party out there, and let's hope there's no cover charge. Because <laughs> we're about to hop right in, folks. All right, let's start out in these woods. There are some pieces of evidence that we have to recreate. Oh, good. From Daniel Class. Yeah. He took a photo from right here. Remember, he caught the shadowy kind of figure. Do you need me to be in it? Maybe stand right there by the uh, door handle. What the hell? Okay. Is that good? Yeah, no, it's it's good. You got it? It's pretty good, actually. I think it's a pretty solid recreation photo. You could probably turn this into a pretty nice Airbnb or something and make a pretty penny off of it. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. Are these uh, frog noises going to compromise the integrity of your EVP results? No, I don't think I'm gonna mistake the sounds of frogs for a ghost. I do appreciate you taking the investigation seriously. That's really good. Yeah. Looks like this is an old house. You know, we have another photo to recreate here oh, from okay. Daniel. Yeah. Oh, this was the there little was smudge a, man, There was right? a little face inside the, inside the curtain there. Yeah. I'm just gonna go for it. Hey, we're taking photos of you. Show us your faces. And now we're gonna go out to the woods. Now, if you recall, we had some drumming out here. We had some unexplained lights, floating eyeballs. Oh, this is the party zone. That's right. Remember, we also had little gnome-like cryptids. We should have brought some glow sticks for this shit. Well, here we are out in the woods, as normal sane people do. Yeah, they do. It's the woods. At night? The, well, that's a little I different. heard something rustling around in the bushes over there. Should we go investigate? No, we shouldn't. What do you think it is? We're ghost hunters, not people or animal hunters. Anybody out there? I feel like if you come face to face with a, a bear, it's gonna kick your ass. Huh? What's going on out there? Is there a party going on in the woods? Any gnomes? Any gnomes, any bug-eyed women? No gnome. Apparently there is legend of a hanging tree out here, okay. which is where we got this photo. And we're gonna try and recreate this photo now. There was a little face behind the tree. Do you wanna? Oh, he's gonna go over there and show it. There we go. All right, now we'd like you to peek out from behind this tree, just like this photo we captured. Very expertly demonstrated by my, my colleague over this. this is a technique we learned in school. What if I just shine the light back over there and Shane's gone? Damn, thought that would work. Okay, you could come on out now. 
I'm gonna take a couple more photos here. How are you feeling? Are you unsettled? I mean, it's kind of beautiful, but at the same time, there's supposed to be weird shit out here. Though I would love to see a little gnome. I think that'd be very funny. Little gnomes, I'll see you on my SLS cam here. The SLS cam uses a grid of infrared light to recognize human-like objects in front of it, even in complete darkness. Are we talking like Smurfs here? Like, what are they, three, four apples high? Oh, what's that? What is that? A deer. Oh, it's a deer. Holy shit. That scared me, dude. I thought I saw a little face. I was like, dude, gnome. Hey, deer, you seen any gnomes? Do you know you're in grave danger in there? Grave danger. No gnomes? Smaller than you? Wear funny little pointy hats? Oh, this deer is staring me straight down. He looks like he's gonna charge He's you. gonna charge me right now. Can we just do a show where we go look at deer? I guess that's not compelling. Nah, deer files isn't gonna do it. No. Well, that was nice, deer. We're gonna find a lady whose eyes are bulging from her skull now. Oh, look at her go, look at her go. You're talking about the deer, right? Not the dancing lady? No, I wish. Look the dancing lady apparently was a lady who might have been hanged. That's why her eyes are bulging from her skull. Well, what's that to dance or about? Or she's I just be absolutely zooted. Dancing lady, can you dance for us? Can you show us your big scary eyeballs? I'll see you on my little SLS camera, perhaps. Looking for the dancing woman, a real dancing queen out here. That's right. <laughs> you don't want to dance your way out of here, out of the lake like the ring girl? It'd be cool if she rose out of the water like Mickey yeah. and um, Fantasmic. That'd be pretty sweet. You know, we should turn our lights off and bask in the darkness for a little sure, bit. Sure, why not? Scanning on my SLS. Ooh! 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 <laughs> it's a it's a frog. All right, no more stalling. It's time to go into the house. It's looking creepy as hell over there. Look at that fucking thing. Come on, brother. We're gonna catch a ghost tonight. Uh, yeah, God willing. Mike Dandy was the oldest child and only son. Initially, he was the family skeptic until his experiences in the house turned him into a believer. Sadly, Mike passed away in 2017. Class, who claims to have captured full body apparitions of Mike in this room, said that Clara Miller thinks, quote, the house came back to get him. Also, directly next to his room sits the kitchen, where the family's most vivid encounters with apparitions took place, from a creepy little boy, unexplained shadow figures, and even an elderly woman. Could one of these lost souls be the same spirit captured in this photo? This appears to be a screen grab from Instagram Live or some sort of live service. 465 people saw a shadow it's figure. A shadow baby. Those monster house situation? It's possible. I mean, it's said that there was an exorcism performed on the house itself. Well, that's, that's what at least that's what a I. Little silly, which right? apparently exorcisms are only supposed to be on people, but so. So I, we're dealing with a priest who doesn't play by the rules. So I imagine there was a priest out there with a fire hose of holy water, <laughs> just spraying the house. I like that. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there! <laughs> <laughs> All right, put this REM pod over in the kitchen, which is where we're gonna go to first to try and recreate the photo that they caught from their security camera. Not a fan of this place already, gotta say. That's Mike's bedroom right there. Okay, this is a bedroom. Okay, so this is where the shadow figure was. About where you're standing? Yeah, and this is, it was caught from the vantage point of over there in the living room through the doorway. So okay. I'm gonna go over there and try and get it myself. All right, Shane, maybe go stand right by the fridge, it looks like. Kind of like that, yeah. So whoever was in here, shadow person. Did you see what I did? Just do it like what he's doing right there, folks. Just taking a couple here. Yeah, those are good. Those are really good. I'm gonna actually put the REM pod in here. The REM pod creates its own circular electromagnetic field and will alarm when anything penetrates that field. 
the more colors on the alarm, the more significant the intrusion. The REM pod also detects temperature fluctuations. Oh, I hope we get something tonight. I really do. And I think tonight's the night. Is that thing okay? Calibrating? It's calibrating right now. Wow. Wait, what the fuck's happening right now? I don't think I've ever quite seen it freak out like this. Is this beyond calibration? Have we gone beyond calibration? I mean, usually it takes about 30 seconds, but I haven't seen it go wild like this. Okay. Nice. Let me just give it the old test. Okay. Okay. Is there somebody with us in this kitchen that's sitting at that table? I oh, stopped right when I said that. We hear there's an elderly woman here. There might be a, a little boy. A little shadow boy. Or perhaps even Mike himself. So we're actually gonna leave that REM pod here and then we're gonna go into Mike's room and we're gonna put the uh, mag light there and then maybe we could get some responses going back and forth here. I mean, allegedly this whole house screams, so we're essentially inside a beast right now. A living, breathing, breathing entity. Thing. A regular mag light, when turned to the space between on and off, can be turned into a touch lamp, which you can ask spirits to manipulate. However, the light will also randomly turn on and off in this setting, so, Responses need to be timely and repetitive for a compelling interaction. Okay, so now we have our mag light here, and then we have the REM pod out in the kitchen. Hello, people of Hinsdale House, or the Dandy House, as it's also known. If there's anybody with us in this house, go ahead and hit that mag light right there by that lamp, or you could go sit down at the kitchen table, mm -hmm. and it'll let us know that you guys want to communicate. Or, you can just fully appear. A pool. full body. Yeah, apparition. full frontal us right now. Yep. I prefer close. Touch it with your little fingers. Little finger, any appendage. You can touch it with your toes. Maybe I don't want to reach wing. out to whatever may be non-human in here. Hey, if there's something in here that's non-human, oh, like a shit. demon. Wow. The oh. light and the REM pod went on at the same time as soon as we talked about that, which is not oh. my favorite. Oh. Stop touching both of those, please. Can you stop touching the REM pod? Ah! If you want to talk to us, can you show us a sign that you're here? What that light went on, that must be a hello. If that's actually you, can you turn off the light right now? Shut it. You can move something in this house. We'll hear it and we'll know that's you and that will let us know you want to communicate. You could touch one of us too right now. You oh, have yeah. our full permission. Yep. After we ask to be touched, we pick up a voice possibly saying, fine, or mine. No, you want to communicate. You could touch one of us too right now. You oh, have yeah. our communicate. You could touch one of us too right now. You oh, have yeah. our. Yeah, why don't you go over there and caress Shane's nipples or something? <laughs> Feel those goosebumps. Is something going to happen tonight, you ask yourself? What's that? He's, Who's got, he's got a hot one. Looks we like got a hot one. Something's very, very close to that. Is that my you, Mike, by at the table? If it is, can you step away from the REM pod right now? Elderly woman, perhaps? Little boy? If it... It's a little boy. Is there a little boy here? The BB boy. He jump around. Is there something the here that doesn't really have a name or that isn't human? Could you show us by touching that red light? Oh! <laughs> we got this going on over here too, we're at the same time. I got a chill up my spine, I did not like that. Okay, could you step away now, please? <laughs> oh, you're a little shit. This has gotta get your heart rate going, right? Yeah, I was not a fan of the timing there. In this particular case, the REM pod's not a, not a device that randomly goes off like the flashlight, so timing isn't as imperative, and yet the timing was perfect and it needed something to be there, so I don't really know. He doesn't know what to think of this. No, I don't know what to think of that. I think that's pretty compelling. Well, let's get even further into the belly of the beast. Or we could just get in the car and go nope. home. Nope, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna press on. Oh, you're really rooted there. There you go. All right. Over the years, the living room has allegedly been host to apparitions, possessions, moving furniture, 
and more. When the activity began, the family decided to ask the Ouija board what was happening. But the planchette flew from their hands, landing directly in front of their statue of Our Lady. Who's Their Lady? Probably a religious Bible it's lady. It's probably like Jesus's mom. So we are gonna do a, a Ouija board session here. I honestly wish that planchette would take us for a ride, baby. That's true. I want I... that thing to zip around like a speedboat and us going, whoa! Because of the presence of a vortex, psychic Alex Tanis and Catholic priest Father Alphonsus decided to perform their spiritual cleansing of the house. During the structural exorcism, people claimed there were horrible screams coming from the house itself. The house is screaming. That's, yeah. The window's like eyes yeah. and then the door going, Ooh! Like I said, I'm imagining that priest out front with a fire hose of holy water. Or if the water's getting in its mouth, it's like, <laughs> Their cleansing seemed to have quieted the activity, but this evidence shows it may not have rid the home of spirits. Pretty good. Well, let's check out the evidence from this room. So this is the living room. This is where the structural exorcism was performed from within the house. And I see we're working with a FLIR camera. That's which right. Is the, what is that, it's a, a heat it's sensitive? A, it's a thermal camera. Thermal. That's correct. Looks like you could see the outline of a figure or a human, no? Yeah. If I caught this, would you be like, damn, you've done it? I don't know, honestly. If I saw a figure on the thermal, it had like fingers and was like, hi! <laughs> or it's just a dancing lady. Right, it was like a clear body that was moving and you could see limbs and just like a full figure, a full figured, uh, an FBA. Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah, I wanted to be doing all that. Uh, here's another piece of evidence from Daniel Class. Oh, I see. Oh yes, the leg. Shapely. That might be the dancing lady dancing her way she's upstairs. She's dancing nonstop. Her, her calves gotta be. Dancing lady dancing outside. Now she's going up the stairs. Who's she meeting up with? It might be time to seduce a ghost once again. We're pretty good at it. No, we're gonna go there. We're gonna hunt in our jackets, no shirt. That might be too much. Is it too sexy? Yeah, the house might implode. Miss here. Uh, what on earth? Uh, Ryan, why do we have three subscriptions to the same streaming service? What's going on here? Oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today's sponsor is here to help, Brian. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place, saving its members over $1 billion and counting. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. What's going on over there? Psst. Hey, Ryan, come over here. What's going on, JJ? Well, hello there. We at Ghost Files Bunker Folk are helping Ryan and Shane by using Rocket Money to safely and securely identify recurring charges and cancel those unwanted or forgotten subscriptions with just a tap. Set up budgets and monitor our spending for future Ghost Files travel and productions, helping us visualize our spend to earn ratio. Cha ching! Set up and choose the amount and frequency so Rocket Money automatically deposits savings into a smart savings account, which you can withdraw from anytime. I mean, that's pretty good news, JJ. I like that. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. I will. Go to rocketmoney.com slash ghostfiles or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, you got it. Okay, thanks to my friends, we're all set. I downloaded Rocket Money. That's rocketmoney.com slash ghostfiles to get started for free. Look, I don't know what's going on here. Let's get back to the show. You need to settle down. Yeah, I really do. So now we're gonna actually try and recreate this funny little leg. Could you actually walk up the stairs? And I just wanna get a reference point here. Right there, stop. Keep that leg there, yeah. I wanna see both your legs, good enough. Okay, you can come down now. Yeah, take, take a couple. Now we're gonna get on in that living room and use the Ouija board. And if you recall, that's where they performed the exorcism. These are great and they always work, but they're very dangerous. Uh, and I, we're I, heroes for doing this. I don't know if we're heroes. We're I'd actually say, incredibly stupid for doing I'm this. Actually, I'm actually, I'm starting to push for a movement to let us ghost hunters like us board planes early. I always do that for the military and pregnant women, but never any mention of us. 
There's also a funny little doll over there that flew off apparently in the past. Go. Just scope her out real quick. So yeah, go get her. Can see her. Oh, wait, do you want me to bring her over here? No, don't get, don't get her. But I mean, just go get a, a shot of her. Her? Yeah. The little one in yellow. Yeah. Oh. I would put my money on these. If you're talking ladies. about what's the creepiest doll in this Look place, it's Hi. those twins. <laughs> I'm actually gonna bring her over. This is just one of our new pals. That's one of your pals for sure. Okay, let's let's get this session going here. Okay. My name's Ryan. I'm Shane. We're reaching out to the inhabitants of the Hinsdale house, or perhaps some sort of entity that is the house itself, I suppose. Give it a nice little hello. I hate using this thing every single time. It's really stupid. H? No, it's more just, a, e. it just feels like a bad idea. L. L. Do you have to like? L, I guess L. you just wiggle on top of it. L, 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 hello. Uh, Excuse Hello me. to that. Okay, so apparently when the dandies reached out last time via Ouija board, they asked what was going on in the house because so many weird things were happening, and then the planchette flew out of their hands. So why don't we just go ahead and go... What's going on? Yeah. Hey. Uh, what's going on? What's going on what's here? There's a lot of weird stuff happening. Could you show us on this board? You can move this. We believe in you. We both believe in you very much. Make so. this thing fly right out of our hands. We have this very dangerous Ouija board here. Your time to shine. Just tell us what your name is. Look, we'll tell you one of our names here. Let's go to S. S. H. H. A. 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 N. And uh, E. And that's Ryan, which is spelled R. I'd rather not spell my name, but y. you know. A. N. Ryan with two N's. That's how you spell my name. B. No, 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 <laughs> no, B. no. North Hollywood. No. <laughs> he was trying to move it to my mother's name. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Can you show us your name? We just showed you ours. That's typically part two of an introduction. It's your turn now. You were really pressing it. You can't do that. Ghosts do are it. weak. I'm feathering right now. Featherlight. Why am I taking this more seriously than you? That's a question that I've got. Well, I just, I was just kind of thinking. I was thinking. About what? Catching ghosts. How about you stop thinking about catching ghosts? And start and doing? Start catching ghosts. I'll show you how I do that right now. Okay. S U C what? K oh. space huh? M, M Y. What? Where's this going? A, A S S. S H O U S E. That says, suck my ass, house. I thought you were going to say, suck my asshole. I could see where you would have thought that was the natural progression of that. Suck my asshole, house. See what comes out. How about 20 seconds to show us how to use this? Here we go. Okay. Hands off the planchette. The hands and are we, off. And we, we are done. Oh wait. Well, you got it. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get your hands back on here. What happens if we don't do this? Well, I don't know, but I don't want to find out. I'm not gonna do it. Well, I'm doing it myself then. Well, guess G what? It doesn't count. O I'm not on o here, so. D D technically, we I. Technically, the portal's still Goodbye. Open. They're Goodbye. Get on that American Goodbye. Airlines flight home. The, it's home. been closed. It's been closed. I've closed it. Bed. Now. Let's get down to some business. We're using new tech now. We're gonna go ahead and just explore the space here in this living room. I have here an ovulus. The ovulus takes environmental readings that spirits are said to manipulate, such as temperature or electromagnetic fields, and converts them Interrupt. into corresponding words new moon. or phonetic sounds. We are now reaching out once again, as we have been to anything or anyone that's in this house. Here we go. Who's with Tina? Who's with Tina? Ike? Uh, a little bit of a dated joke, but you know what it is? You're scared. It says scared. Scared and the storm. There is a storm outside. What are you scared of? The storm? Are you scared of you're scared of 13? Mark. Unlucky number. Mark. Mark. You're scared of Mark. We are too. I am too. He There's has nothing behind those eyes. Dead eyes. Lisa. Lee. Lisa, Joe, Mark, and Tina. That's a lot of names. Are these the names of people that have lived here? Actually, wait a second. Scratch me, by the way. We have heard tell of people getting burned in this house. Could you burn, burn us? Burn my ass! Scratch me, please! Cut. 
Scan, cut, 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 cut. Yeah, cut them. Scan my beautiful body. President. Zero in on a little patch of skin and slice it up. It says complete. Are you scratched or cut? No. Oh. Could you do your best to manipulate something in this room? Or you, if you want to scratch or cut or burn one of us, manipulate I Manipulate me, a beautiful human canvas. Ambition. I'm not seeing a lot of ambition right now. Oh, Take your ghost finger and stick it right up his butthole. Get right in there. You could scratch me all up inside. Dirty. That is dirty. Yeah, a little bit. Edison, nighttime, nighttime ring. Spirit, spirit. 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 inside. Nighttime ring, spirit. Moan. Inside There's, and moan. He really taken that butthole instruction <laughs> to heart. So there was a photo that was caught in this living room on thermal, right by this couch. The flare camera is a thermal imaging device that allows you to visually detect any hot and cold spots that may indicate the presence of something paranormal. Can you possibly show yourself again? I'm recording actually on a thermal cam. I might be able to see you if you're trying to show yourself. Wouldn't you like to be on TV? Not quite TV. It's close enough. It's close enough. Put television caliber. Television caliber, perhaps, but TV, not quite yet. Um, but that could change if you show yourself. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, show us your heat. Now look at that hot, hot body. Wow. I mean, actually, this is crazy. It's it's getting hotter on the, on the camera here somehow. I'm having even trouble holding this now. Holy shit, my fingers are burning. I better step out then. Once again, anything, ooh, wait a tick. What do you got? It looks like the outline of a, a body right there, kinda, sure. on the far right. Sure, and, and I don't see nothing in there. It was briefly there, kinda? I don't know. You want me to go catch it? Is there somebody in the kitchen? Okay. Thought if I moved really, really fast, I would catch him. We're gonna go upstairs now. We got some really good stuff on there. Uh, feel free to, you know, say something on the very dangerous Ouija board. A static cam and audio recorder left in this room picked up what sounds like a child screaming. Clara believed that, quote, Laura was the most affected by the house in the long run. A visiting psychic sensed that a woman had been violently attacked in the home years ago, and he feared Laura was being possessed by this woman's thoughts. Tragically, Laura passed away at the age of 32, fulfilling her own prophecy when she told a friend, quote, I know I'm going to die young, and it doesn't matter because I've seen everything anyway. She's led a full life, it's a full life. A full life at 32, I'm 32. Would you be content dying today? No, I got many got more, more to things see. to do, more, more things to, to do, more ghosts to catch. Today, the scent of Vic's vapor rub is known to fill the room, which Laura used frequently to calm her nerves. Investigators claim to have seen a woman sitting at Laura's window. Time for us to take some deep breaths of minty menthol medicine and head in. If my ghost was associated with the scent of popcorn, the best, the best. I'd want something nasty, you know? Anytime I smell a skunk outside, I roll my windows down and I get a big whiff of it because I find it a very interesting smell. I would like to smell like a skunk, real strong and pungent, and everyone would know that's Shane. Wow. You're like, you gotta take a tomato juice bath after you, you encounter my ghost. Okay, well, let's get to the location. Oh, okay. And enough from Pepe Le Pew over here. Nice stairs. This place was not built for a slightly above average uh, person like me. Wow, this really is a small room. It's a really little teeny tiny one. Ooh, you know, I gotta say, I think it's maybe because it's such a small room, I don't feel great in here. It's uh, dusty. Now, Laura, unfortunately, uh, did pass at 32, but a psychic did feel that she was being possessed by the spirit of somebody, a woman who had been attacked. Because Laura had... What? Just got hit in the face with a, a big-ass fly. There's bugs, yeah, there's bugs, man. Are you sure it was a fly and not just like a high-speed orb? <laughs> a floater? Well, Laura, we're gonna turn on something that might help you communicate with us. Oh, this will help. The spirit box rapidly scans radio signals to create white noise through which spirits can communicate and the honey tone filters out the noise while amplifying only the voices. Hello. We're gonna set a baseline right now. My name is Ryan. I'm Shane. Can you say our names back to us to let us know that you want to communicate? These drawings on these walls are really creepy. Are these drawings or is this wallpaper? wallpaper? Laura, if you're here, was this a painting you like looking at? 
It's a poodle taking a shower. Or Laura, did you put up this wallpaper in your room? This pool's getting ready for the day. Oh, I just heard a little girl voice. Laura, was that you? Or is there somebody else in this house that wants to speak to me? Oh, I heard a little hi. A little laugh. We're not from around here. I just want to know why do things keep happening in this house? Just a card? I thought it said just died. Just died. Just died. You know, which is what a ghost would say. You just died here? Sure. I heard a sure. Can you say our names? Ryan or Shane? I actually sounded like I heard both. And I heard Mark. Is there a demon here? Jesus, can you move something in this room? Now, Laura, this is, was your favorite. I know you often used Vicks VapoRub, and that's actually what people smell in this room. Oh my God, it smells so good. Is it really good? I never used this when I was a child. That is nice. Was this something you liked? Could you tell us this was oh, something you liked? Really nice. Oh. All you have to say is your name and I'll let you have some of this. You can eat it if you want. You're a ghost, it's not gonna poison you. Mm. If you were a ghost, would you eat that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I wish I could. It's yeah, that's what I'm so saying. goddamn good. It would taste really good. Well, we're gonna leave this here, Loa. We're gonna leave it right here. And if anybody wants some of it, you can go ahead and take a little scoop. Anything anybody wants to say to us before we leave? Okay, we're gonna leave. Bye bye. We will be back later alone. This is dangerous, dangerous. very dangerous. Poor. Right under the room. Anyway. Very poor design. Maybe this like used to be just a attic. Bond. You're not gonna be asleep long. You're sleep falling. Now that is one nasty ass attic. Good job cleaning up, ghosts. Oh, I feel like you down here. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> very I'm excited good. Excited to hunt some ghosts. Very good. Very good. I'm just having. You know, I could have just kicked you right in the chest and you would have fell right down the oh, stairs. And I've never done that to you. No. Now, we are going to the parents' room now. Okay. Which is right here. Oh, look, a little skin of a rink. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. Clara had an experience beyond the normal apparitions and sounds of others in the home. Once, Clara claims, she laid down to sleep, only to become instantly paralyzed. But what she was experiencing may not have been normal sleep paralysis. Mary called to her. Clara asked what she wanted, but all Mary could say was, good night. As she prayed to be freed, she was released. Mary had seen a young boy in jeans standing at the foot of the bed, watching Clara. Could this spirit be the cause of Clara's paralysis? So Clara lays down to sleep, paralyzed. Yeah. Mary's calling from elsewhere in the house because she sees a hunk in jeans. Well, it's a little boy. Oh, a little boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the little boy must have seen Clara and gone, shwink, and paralyzed her. <laughs> paralyzed power! And then he goes upstairs, shows up by the bed, and Mary's freaking out, going, Clara, Clara, there's a little boy here in yeah. dungarees. Maybe we'll see the little boy in his funny little jeans. I wonder what color they are. All right, now this is the parents' bedroom. Pretty hard to do any kind of uh, incognito boinking in this room. We're doing some calisthenics in here. I'm helping your mother with her back right now. Yeah. Well, honestly, I think you should stop because it feels like the floor is going to collapse. Claire was asleep, feeling paralyzed. Saw a little boy in jeans at the foot of the bed, as did Mary, who came out of her room. Yeah, I guess that would be scary. A little boy here with his yeah. jeans on. I used to stand at the foot of my parents' bed when they were sleeping because I was scared there was something in my room and I would just stand there silently. I'm surprised they didn't leave you at the fire station, man. All right, we're gonna do the, uh, we're gonna use the Estes method here. The Estes method is a technique when one person wears noise-canceling headphones connected to the spirit box, becoming a human speaker system by repeating exactly what they hear. The other person facilitates communication with spirits by asking questions and attempting to elicit clear and direct responses. 
I'm gonna be the one wearing the headphones and Shane's gonna be the asker. Why? I like being the antenna. I know you do. That's why you're not gonna do it. Can I at least lay on the bed? You sure you're not gonna just sleep? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go sit in this closet. Now we do have a REM pod here. We could use this. Yeah, you love that shit. I'm about to turn on the spirit box and here we go. Ryan, can you hear me? I want to hear one word from him. That's going to be the ghosts opening the conversation. Well, I'll talk to them. Hey, ghost. Mm. Ghosts. Hello. Uh, look at me, I'm paralyzed. Much like Clara when she had that sleep paralysis. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for a, a little boy in dungarees, but I don't see him. Maybe you can go toward the little red light. That's called a REM pod. And if you move toward it, it'll uh, do some R2-D2 beep boops, and that means uh, the ghosts are real. Nothing, I'm getting completely nothing. Yeah, I'm not getting much out here. Ryan, there's nothing going on there. Ryan. Ryan! Yeah. The, the REM pod's going. Maybe they just don't like you. Anyone in this house? It's a tiny house, my no. voice is... What? Did you say something, Ryan? Hello? 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 Well, let's see if we can not get Ryan out of this little room here. Oop. What was that? Hey. Well, now he's saying words. Oh, it was, what was that in hey? Well, maybe they heard me screaming. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. <clears throat> Oh, okay, we got a fucking thing going here. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, what's your name? Barbara? Barbara? Cadabra? Barbara? Cadabra? I... Barbara? Shep Shepherd? Barbara Shepherd? Barbara, what's your deal? Describe yourself in one word, Barbara. Who's Barbara? Really? I'm giving you the same question that Urban Outfitters asked me when I... I what? How want... Finish the fucking sentence, Barbara. He's, oh, it sounded like he's coming. Something's coming. It is a small house. You might hear that in here if people were being amorous. You hear a demon coming? What that, what that must sound like? Shit. You seem concerned. In your face? <laughs> Shit in my face. <laughs> All right, I guess Barbara's not a fan of my sort of attitude, which is fair. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up there. Did you enjoy being the radio? Oh, I really did, because I don't have to do anything but just say what I hear. Yeah, that's why I like it too. I'm well, apparently them. you're here to eat turds. I came here to chew gum and eat shit, and I'm all out of gum. At the beginning, the activity seemed to be centered around Mary's room. Within a two month period of moving in, a guinea pig, canary, and parakeet dropped dead in here for no apparent reason. Mary experienced something pulling her clothes from her drawers. And one time, it even hurled her record player into the middle of the room. The atmosphere seemed as if there was a vacuum inside causing a strong physical pressure on your temples and ears, sometimes causing them to pop. During their visit, a psychic received a mysterious burn on his back as he became depleted of energy. Uh, oh. <laughs> I need more juice, someone plug me in. Does anyone have a neutral grade bar? <laughs> he claimed a young woman had been locked in here until her death. To this day, people hear voices and see objects move in this room. The claims in this house seem so Looney Tunish. It's hard for me to kind of fathom that they happened, but if we get there and we start seeing some of this stuff, my laughter will slowly become tears. Anyways, we got some evidence in this room, oh, okay. as you would expect from yeah. that kind of tale. Looks hey, like a- Hey, look at that. Yep. That's a commitment to faking ghost evidence. <laughs> It really is. I'm sure that healed up fine. They're okay. We're not laughing at their misfortune, but I've never been scratched, so. That's true. Maybe today's the day, though. That's a lot of real estate and uh, a lot of deserved scratching, honestly. Yeah. You've, you've racked up. I'm ready. The bounty, if I'm you will. I'm ready. And the next piece of evidence comes from Fred and Cam Cashman, who are actually related to Olivia Cashman, who used to intern for Watcher. Let's hear from them. So we are up in Mary's room, which is allegedly the most haunted room in the house. 
We had done a five minute EVP recording session. Another investigator had come upstairs and was talking outside the room. So I decided to end our EVP session. What you hear in the recording that we didn't hear in the moment is a disembodied voice telling us to come back later. All right, I'll come back later. I'll come back later. It's sound. That's some sound, man. It sounds pretty clearly like come back later. I'm not saying that Olivia's family would be untruthful. She was a wonderful intern. He's in a very tough predicament right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wonderful family. Give me the evidence. I want to believe. Give me the I evidence. Want you, please. Oh, wait, that evidence is too strong and it challenges me. So, you know what? I don't want the evidence. It's fake. Uh, he's getting rattled. That's you. So let's go to Mary's room now. And I, I don't know if you remember, but there is a whole lot of stuff that happened in this room. That's a lot of stuff happening for we such got, a tiny room. Hey, it's true, we got clothes flying out of here. We got that uh, psychic getting a burn and getting depleted of energy like a, like a giant human battery. Cool. I forgot, there is uh, reports of ear popping pressure, almost like you're on an airplane. Could you crush my head like yeah. a little grape? Squish our heads. Squish me. Squish them. We want to be squished. Squish. Me! Why don't you squish him? Just squish the poor boy! Squish my friend! Look at him! You, you tell me you don't want to squish that! Look at that face! You don't want to squish that! Look at, Oh, you're making the boy sad! Squish him, goddammit! Squish the boy! Squish him! I'm gonna give you 20 seconds of silence, but you better fucking squish his head like a little grave! Did you feel a squish? No, nah, but wouldn't it have been amazing? <laughs> this is what my head would look like if it was being squished. <laughs> uh, this right here is a mag light. You could use this to communicate with us by just simply tapping it. Okay, so you, mm. now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. Boink. Okay, Bye. now the light's on. Let's go ahead and turn it off. All right, lucky. Now let's go ahead and turn it on in one, two, three, on. Right now. No. Let's play it this way. If Mike is here, can you turn on that flashlight right now? No. If Clara is here. Well, Clara's alive. Oh. Or is she? <laughs> <laughs> Laura, if you are here, can you turn the light off right now? If there's a demon here, turn that light off right now. Blue jeans boy, if you're here, can you turn it off? Shadow man, I know it's kind of weird to ask you to go towards the light, but I'm gonna need you to do that. Mm. Shadow man, a very imposing figure. Honestly. Shadow man, can you turn on the light man. now if you're here? If house is demon, turn light on. Like its legs are in the ground and like it would get up and like yeah. walk away. Yeah, like that, like a transformer. See you later, ghoul boy. If house is demon transformer. <laughs> I am a big demon shaped uh -oh. like a house. Don't look up, you might see my attic. <laughs> you might see my basement. I don't have my underwear on. <laughs> Did you like that? Is that funny? Did you know? like that bit? Did that why you turned the light on? If you like that bit, turn the light off now. You like turn that. that shit off. We're you, really funny. You knew that was, you you knew that that was, was fucking funny. funny. You knew it was so off. goddamn turn, funny, turn, dude. Turn. We are going to wrap this up because we are going to come back later alone. But we have one last horrible room in this horrible house. And as you know, that's the root cellar. It's yeah, gonna suck. let's get out of here. And let's get a heavy mask because I hear it's gross down there. So. All right, let's go. Even before Clara knew the home was haunted, she hated the root cellar. She mm. said, quote, descending the rickety stairs and coming to the dirt floor made my flesh crawl. One psychic claims to have had a vision of bodies stacked down on the floor like firewood. Unknown figures have been seen stalking the room. And this is where another paranormal team had a ghost box tell them several times to get out, which of course is why we're going in to feed the content gods that demand our suffering. There seems to be a lot going on in this house and it's either fantastical or it's real. I don't really care. All I care about is going in there and finding ghosts. Doing the damn work. If know? I could find evidence of ghosts, I've done my job. So you haven't done it yet, but we're we're getting I've in done there it and hopefully, several times. Hopefully this I've time done it you'll several do your job. times. Nobody wants to work anymore.
Shall we take the steps down to the cellar? I think so. All right, down to the root cellar. You get there through the bathroom, yeah. as you would expect. How and it's also really gross down there, so we do have these masks. I will say for us to be wearing masks in one of these haunted houses means it is severely, it's severely fucked up because we've gone to a lot of places. Wow, these stairs are not. Wow, it really is uh, heinous down here. Very convincing. Oh my God, oh. Okay, well, this is, this. Oh, don't you miss this? Oh. Is there, oh, I actually think I heard get out right there. Yeah? I'm serious. Do you want us to leave? If this thing is speeding up on its own, it's freaking out. What's happening? I don't know, I've never done this before. Whoa, 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 whoa it's whoa, going nuclear, bro! I'm not, do, I'm not doing anything. Whoa, hey, 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 hey! Okay. No, that was intense. I felt like it was gonna explode. <laughs> it did too. I heard, get out, yeah. and then it went crazy. Let's try this again. Now, apparently a psychic said there was a bunch of bodies piled up down here. I think the psychic just wanted to get out of here. They were like, yeah, oh, there's like, a bunch oh, of bodies. Oh, oh, it sucks here, yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff happened here. We gotta go. Stack like firewood, we should go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking to the pile of bodies. Can you all say our names in unison? It's disgusting down here. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because we did already get to get out. And I'm now going to just quickly turn on the off list just so if I could see if we could get it to say cellar because that would be really cool. Can you tell us where we are in the house right now? Glass. No. no. Where are we in the house? Radio. No. Oh, well, we were well, that... use, according to Shane, using a radio. That's true. Tell us where we are in the house. You're getting closer. Cold. It is cold down here. It is here. cold, and it is cold what you're doing. You're not responding to us. Over. What's over? Hat. Hat? Uh -huh. He's wearing a hat. Okay. Easy. Is it easy? Take the hat off. Not you. Not, not you, the ghosts. Oh. <laughs> Tell us to leave. Tell us why you're down here. What the fuck is that? The spirit box has a temperature gauge on it as well, and it looks like the temperature is going up. Rick Hughes, you don't want to answer these questions. Oh, that was weird. You got a hot pocket there, buddy? Maybe. Did it say anus? It said famous. Oh, okay. Maybe they're talking about our YouTube show. We are f famous. We're really famous guys. <laughs> <laughs> you have 10 seconds to start talking to us or we're leaving. Psychic. There was a psychic down here. There was a psychic. Thought. Uh, wow. Wow. Daddy. Okay. okay. Wow, daddy. Are we wow daddies? Yeah, to some degree, I think we're wow daddies. Okay. Well, on that note, we're gonna get out of here. Yeah. Thank you for that compliment, though. Wow. Thank you, Mommy. Wow, these stairs are fucking horrible. Oh, wow! And now we move on to the final phase of the hunt, our individual investigation of the entire Hinsdale house. You gonna make that house scream? You know I will. You gonna get that puppy wailing? Wanna walk in there, kick down the door, and be like, oh, daddy's home. Yeah, I'm all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right, right. Let's get that's in there. right, let's get baby. In there. Yeah. Here's how our solo investigation will work. Shane and I will each have 20 minutes of alone time in the location. Shane will go first, and at the end of his time, we'll hide a walkie talkie in the building. Once Shane returns, he will give me a hint on where to find said walkie talkie. Then it's my turn. I'll enter the building, and only after I radio back to Shane with the hidden walkie talkie will the clock start on my 20 minutes of solo investigation. Let the games begin. <coughs> okay, I'm ready to go. Is your brain constricted or a something? A little bit. Good. A little bit. Good. 20 minutes. I'm going to place the walkie in there. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go down to the basement. No, it's really gross down there. It's bad it for sucks. your health. We don't have to mince words. It sucks. It, it sucks. And not in a scary way. I'm not scared of it. I get that. It just sucks. Well, have fun. Thank you. Okay, I am entering the home. I got to remember to keep my head really low in here because oh well okay off to a bad start i'm coming in okay i'm gonna level with you guys it's a good haunted house i mean it's a haunting place but also beautiful at the same time hauntingly beautiful remote isolated, hard for police to get to if i were to run into some sort of axe murderer out here Hey, uh, to the bevy of ghouls who occupy this wonderful home, 
I'm Shane. You may remember me from 20 minutes ago. I'm a ghost hunter. I do this about six days a year, but people think it's my full-time job. Now you know a little bit about me. How about you tell me a little bit about yourself? And why don't we start in here? Ooh, the sound dampened when we were in here. I've got this beautiful seance set up here with this Ouija board. Everyone's always scared of the Ouija boards. I don't know why. Let's have some fun with it. The REM pod turning on and off very, very on command in the kitchen was not my favorite thing. The one room that actually made me feel the strangest was Laura's room. I think that might be just because it's so damn small. Does the size creep me out? I do think size matters. Fuck you, ghosts. How about that? Is that fun for you guys? Oh, I've got a novelist here too. Let's turn this thing on. What's cracking? My name's Shane. I'm chilling in the seance room, living room. I'm gonna turn off my light now. How about that? I'm gonna be quiet for 20 seconds. Whatever you say during these 20 seconds is actual communication from ghosts and we will treat it with the weight that that deserves. Okay, here we go. Quiet. I don't hear anything. Just take a listen here. Pretty magical. Ovilus is very quiet. Shot. Messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Seems like you're afraid to tell me something. So what is it? What do you desperately need to communicate with me and to our wider YouTube audience? Give me one more word, how about that? Anything at all. No, that's either ducks or two frogs fucking. And I'd like to think it's two frogs making sweet, sweet love. Just ribbiting away. Ribbiting and... Come on, folks! There's a whole slew of ghouls in here. We got we got the, the lady with the bugging eyes out at the pond. We got the shadow baby. We got the boy in jeans. We got a demon. We got a whole house possessed by shit. You can't give me one more word? Jesus fucking Christ, man. Come on. Terms. What are your terms? Knife. Okay. Knife terms. Well, this has been a very productive conversation. I heard what sounded like a little whisper over there. Do I believe it was a ghost? I'm milking the moment for drama, but the answer is no. I don't actually believe it was a ghost, but I did hear a noise. We're all in more danger out here than we would be inside there. There could be some kind of wild animal that just emerges from the brush over there and kills at least one of us before the others could have enough time to run away. Okay, now I'm in the kitchen. Did you guys notice all the wonderful signatures in this kitchen? I like to see the other crews out there, you know? Shout out to Bearded Paranormal. Shout out to Ghouls Paranormal. The Haunted Archives. Bumpin' the Night Society. Wow, they got a bunch of suckers coming to this place. That's very exciting. You know, they did perform a full exorcism on this house, so I'm going to stand in the very center of this house. If it were truly possessed, this would, I assume, be where the energy is the strongest. So. I'm I'm gonna be quiet momentarily, but feel free to scratch me, snap my neck, have at me. Here we go. Of course. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. The ovalist speaking just then did give me a little jump because I forgot it was on. Now, Shane, I don't want to interrupt whatever you're doing. I'm, I'm sure it's very important, but do, do remember, you have to go into the parents' bedroom and encourage that goes to shit on your face if you recall right okay gotcha actually before i do that i just want to get a friend obviously i'm gonna bring this one with me she's got a funny cracked skin face so hopefully get some shit in my mouth that'd be a get i mean it'd be sort of an unfortunate way to prove ghosts were real shane what are you wearing under your ghost files jacket 
a, a turtleneck thing. Damn. Damn, that's unfortunate. Why, did you want me to take my shirt off and put Vicks on? No, I wanted you to take your shirt and your jacket off, stand in front of a mirror, and encourage someone uh, to, to scratch you across the chest. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be too cumbersome. Plus, I don't want to blind the audience. Roll your turtleneck down, though, and then ask them to scratch your neck. All right, folks, I've got the Ovilus on. I've got two friends here. I don't know if you can see them. Also, God uh, damn it, dude. I know I'm asking you to do a lot, but while you're lying down on your back with your mouth open, asking a ghost to shit in it, could you make toilet noises? I think that would be hard to do with my mouth open, but I'll, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> what the hell is this show? Okay, uh, I'm going to open my mouth and ask you to shit in it. I'm going to roll down my turtleneck and ask you to scratch me. And finally, I'd also like you to listen to me make toilet noises with my mouth because I am one of the world's greatest ghost hunters. Do you know what time it is? It's, shut the fuck up, boo buddy. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Is it weird to say that it would legitimately be a dream come true to have a ghost take a shit in my best friend's mouth? Shit in my mouth! You won't see any other ghost hunter in the world ask a ghost to drop a mud pie on their face. And that's the ghost files difference, baby. How's it going? Hopefully. I can't understand you because your mouth is full. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, brother. There's no shit in my mouth and no scratches on my neck. But maybe they're saving it for you. You might be right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put Skinamarink at the top of the stairs. That'll be nice for Ryan. That'll be a nice sight for him. Where am I gonna put this walkie? I'll put it under the bed. How about that? <laughs> That's actually pretty nasty. Oh, that went far. <laughs> okay, well. House, I'm on my way out of here. It's been an absolute pleasure. There he is. There's our special boy. Yeah, dude, hell yeah. I hope you have a chocolate mustache. That kicked ass, man. That was genuinely freaky. All right, you want this helmet? Sure. The walkie-talkie is under the bed. I slid it under there. You fucking... <laughs> Dude, there's no way we're able to get that with the helmet on. You <laughs> can get it. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> All right. Get this helmet off me, please. It's time to finish strong, God damn it. Yeah, you're the champ. He's the champ. Everybody's rooting for you. Oh, baby. We were all I, rooting when for I you. When I come back, my mouth is going to be full of ghost fudge. Yes. 20 minutes. Once you find that walkie. Yeah, once I fish it out. Unbelievable. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Dog? It, it sounds like a dog. Right here. <laughs> Shane put the skin of a ring thing right here. That's good. Oh man. What a pain in the ass. <sighs> All right, I have it. Nice, nice. Okay, your 20 minutes begins now. I'm up in the dandy house, the Hinsdale house by myself. Okay. Is there anybody up here with me in this room, in the bedroom? Can you folks tell me why this house is actually haunted? Because I didn't find any crazy history and yet you persist. Hey, go lay on the bed and do the mouth test. Oh yeah, I could do that right now. The paralyzed poo mouth. Actually, just to give it a little more leverage, can you lay on the bed with your head hanging over and sort of like hanging back? I think that would be easier for the ghost to get in there. You're into some freaky stuff, aren't you? I just think it'll be funny to watch you struggle to have the helmet weigh your head down and then pick it back up afterwards. Sure, sure, sure. This is definitely not a move you've executed yourself. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, this helmet's heavy. Oh. All right, ghost. You did say you wanted to shit on his face. At least that's what I heard in the spirit box. Shit on my face. 
I do genuinely like being in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes we'll be on hunts and a, a, a car will go by and Ron will be like, oh, did you see that ghost moving down the street really fast? There were two glowing orbs on the front of it and two glowing red orbs on the back of it. That's a Nissan Sentra, Ryan. Caca time. Poo poo. And we've got this wonderful symphony of Mother Gaia. If you listen, I'll just, just take it in for a second here. Shush, shush. Oh, all right. <sighs> oh my God. Wow, that actually made me a little dizzy. The, not because of ghost. The helmet distribution hanging off the side was tough. You that bullfrog? That's good. Sorry, I muted you because I was listening to a bullfrog. Oh yeah, there was two frogs fucking out there. That's beautiful. Okay, I'm in Mary's room now. Apparently a bunch of crazy shit happens in here, so let's have some stuff fling around in here. Hit me! Hit me with a toy! Even among all this death, two bullfrogs getting horny over in the lake over there. Most of these noises, I assume, are, are, are creatures just ready to lose themselves in each other's bodies. Come on! Right in the face! And that's, that's kind of a nice little bet. Oh, that's Ryan screaming. Hit me right between the eyes, son of a bitch! You scream from inside as if as if we're hearing the house scream. Oh, so I'm playing the house. Mm, correct. Let me get into character. You're a house, you're a house, you're a house. Ryan, I have a challenge for you. What? I want you to find a big mirror and stare at yourself in silence for 30 seconds very intently. Look at your own face until you don't recognize yourself anymore. How do you know my morning ritual? <laughs> you disgust me. You're my pal. No, you're not. Yeah, you are. You fucking suck at ghost hunting. That's not true, I'm just joking. Did I learn anything about Ryan this season? No. Ovelis time for me. Thirteen. Thirteen what? Is this you, Laura? Pulled. Show. Pulled, showed. Meat. Interest. Okay, you pulled your meat and you're interested in that. This is a family friendly show. You disgust me. Ooh, I just heard a big bump somewhere in the house. Ooh, I just heard a big bump somewhere in the house. That's unsettling. Tone. Head. Ha! Ha ha ha! I think I'm being hit on by a ghost. What are they saying? I got on the ovalus pool meat. And then I barked back and it said tone. And then after a second it said head. I think ghosts are real. Well, I did hear the bump from downstairs, so I'm gonna go down there. Is this where the bump came from, or did it come from the cellar? Don't want to go there, but starting to feel like I have to. All right, let's fucking do this. It's game time, motherfucker! It is game fucking time! Are you ready for this? That is a steep ass drop. All right, I'm looking at the cellar. Anybody down there? It's too dangerous for me to go down there. You could come up here though, the door's open. Let's communicate via knocks. One knock for yes, two knocks for no. Is there somebody down there? Do you want me to come down there? I'm gonna lose my fucking mind if I hear something. You want me to get out? One knock for yes, two knocks for no. Do you want me to get out? Good enough for me. All right. I think it's time, folks. I believe that's time. By the way. You're right, Buckaroo. Come on out. Well, that's it, folks. It's been fun in that it hasn't been at all. This is where we depart. This is it. Till the next uh, group that comes in here, you know. Sorry to hear that you're, you were in pain, house. There he is. There I am.
That's a house, right? It is a house. It's a creepy house. It's a creepy house. There was a moment where I was sitting and I heard a big old bump somewhere from down below the house. I wasn't sure what it was. That's spooky. I always think it's spookier when noises in the house come from elsewhere. Because then you have to go investigate, which I did because that's what we do. That's what we do. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, come on, let's really, get out. It's, it's, it's starting to get it's, moist. It's starting to rain. So wait, that ghost was gonna dude. blow you? Or? I think so, dude. He was trying to get me to pull out the meat. What did the ovalist just say, duty? It did say duty. <laughs> in spite of the dandy's hope for an idyllic life in the country, they found themselves swarmed by entities seemingly hellbent on tearing their family apart, leaving the home reverberating with activity to this day. Were their spirits attempting to call our names? What was that chilling scream we captured? Who was telling us to get out of the basement? Could there have been something inhuman trying to communicate with us? Our job as investigators is to collect and present questions, possibilities. Interpretation, however, solely belongs with you. But for our part, the haunted Hinsdale house can now be locked away in the ghost files. Hey, hope you enjoyed the app. Don't forget, we are doing podcasts now, so lubricate those eardrums and let's party. That's disgusting. I know. <laughs>